Hey there, welcome back to another week of Energy Express. I'm your host, Zach Harold. We're going to begin today's episode with a read aloud. Let's listen as Lauren Seiler and her son Henry read The Earth Gives More. Hi, I'm Lauren Seiler, Director of Development for Extension, and this is my son Henry. Hello, I'm Henry, and I'm going into fourth grade. I am nine years old, and I'm very excited to be here. We are in Knapp Hall today in Morgantown, West Virginia. But today, we are going to be reading The Earth Gives More by Sue Fleiss. You ready? Yep. Awesome. Feel the wind blow through your hair as you breathe the clean, fresh air. It looks really pretty, huh? Yeah. Like the butterflies and the dog running. And the little rat. And the little rat. Or a groundhog or something. A little critter down there, huh? Yeah. Run barefooted through the grass. Watch the clouds change as they pass. We do that all the time in our backyard, don't yeah. we? Except not barefooted. Not barefooted, usually. Right. Swim the ocean, shape the sand, give the beach a helping hand, float, play, clear away, still the earth gives more. Oh wow, that beach looks awesome. Yeah, with those dolphins. There's some dolphins. Or that one over there could be a shark. It could be a shark. Or not, probably not. Hopefully there's not shark infested waters. Probably. Probably. Leaves of green turn yellow red, Spin and swirl around your head. Ooh, look at all those cool the fall squirrel. leaves. There's a squirrel there. There's a couple squirrels. Look, there's one there. One oh, there. I didn't see that one. Huh. Hmm. Scoop them all into a heap. Get a running start and leap. Oh, that looks so much fun. Woo. Yeah, there's a the huge. The woofer. There's the woofer. Spread the leaf to feet the ground. Take in all of the na of nature's sounds. Crunch and scatter, force chatter. Still the earth gives more. That's great. Stormy weather chills the air. Bundle like a pol polar bear. Oh yeah, look, they look nice and cozy mm -hmm. inside, huh? And did you see those gear in the? Oh, yeah. there are some deer out there. There's lots of deer in West Virginia, huh? Mm. Yeah. Snowflakes ride the winter breeze, sail on sleds, and glide on skis. Oh, wow. That looks like so much fun. Yeah. And still, oh, a rabbit. Mm. Oh, there's a rabbit. There's and there's a little bird. Yeah. And the, wait, wait, wait. wait. I saw oh, wait. We got to go back. So sorry. Oh, there's a little cabin. Oh, yeah. And more cabins. Lots but, of cabins. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Fill the feeder on the tree. Birds below watch patiently. Forge, wait, hibernate. Still the earth gives more. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Oh, that little rabbit. Look at that little wait, guy. Wait, that could be a squirrel. Mm. Squirrel. Mm. I don't know. It's underground. What could that be? Uh, oh, there's a little skunk. Yeah, there's skunk a skunk. Day. Yeah, the skunk is hibernating. Woof. Wait, no, those are squirrels. That's not even close to. That could be a rabbit. Or a groundhog. Probably a groundhog. We don't know, yeah. Sunbeams stretch with all their might. Share their power, warm and warmth and light. Oh wow. And look, they've got Wee. a little garden over here and they have uh, a greenhouse over here. Horse. And there's horses. That's right. pretty cool. There's more birds. Hear the distance thunder crash. First a drizzle, then we splash. More birds. More birds. They're Bicycles. splashing in the rain. That's doggo! so fun to do. And there's another doggo. Raindrops fall and shoot, shoots push through. Rise and bloom, begin anew. Shine so, shower grows, still the earth gives more. Wow. Ooh, a cat. Wow. Lots of animals in here, huh? Yeah. 
Wish on stars in nighttime sky. Welcome every new surprise. Oh, wow. Look, they're wishing on a wishing star, huh? And another woofer. And another woofer. Do your part. Use what you know. Help the earth to thrive and grow. Guard the land and air and seas. What is left without all these? Gosh, what would be left without all these? I don't know. Yeah. Ooh, what is that? Looks that like some doggos cool? swimming, huh? Or a platypus. Or a platypus. I don't know. Love, respect, befriend, protect, so the earth gives more. That's right. And look at all the cool things that they're doing because the Ooh, earth is healthy. Uh, look at the birds in the nest. A, they're having a picnic. Blue jay. Or blue, yeah, bluebird. Yeah. Bluebird. And that's the end. So that is the end of The Earth Gives More. What was your favorite part, Henry? Uh, all the dogs. All the dogs. All the doggos, woofers, canines, dogs. critters, right? Yeah. Yeah, you found. Oh, I just realized on the ice page, there's a little deer. Yep, there's lots of deer. Yeah, I think you found every critter on all of these pages. Well, I've had a lot of fun reading this book. Oh, Maybe this is something. Yep, there's a bunny on the I never knew <laughs> Maybe this is something you can do with your classmates, because I know you're excited to see them uh, as we go back to school, right? right? Yeah, so maybe this is one you can read in your class. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Henry, do you have anything to say before we sign off? Goodbye. Goodbye. It's normal to feel both excited and nervous when we start something new. Like, the new school year that's coming up. Well, let's go talk with Misha Poor. She's WVU's Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion about new beginnings. Hello friends, Misha Poor here, Vice President for the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at West Virginia University. Let's talk. Today, let's talk about new beginnings. It's hard to believe, but it's almost time for a new school year to begin. Yay! Are you looking forward to moving up to the next class? That can be exciting and can also make you a little nervous. Having both feelings at the same time is entirely normal and okay. Here's my challenge to you. Embrace this new beginning. Value one another, listen to one another, learn from one another, and respect each other. If you and others do that, I know this school year will be magnificent. Like they say, when you know better, you do better, and we all can do better. So, welcome to this new year. You know how when school starts and they give you that calendar that shows what you're gonna eat for breakfast and lunch every day? Well, if you're anything like me, you probably go through there and think, oh boy, this sounds good. Oh boy, this sounds good. Oh boy, I'm definitely gonna pack my lunch this day. Well, we've got family and community development agent, Angela Lawrence, to teach us how to pack healthy lunches on those days when we might not like what the school cafeteria serve. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Angela Lawrence, and I'm here with West Virginia University Extension. I'd like to talk to you today about how to pack a healthy lunch. As the Family and Community Development Extension Agent here in Berkeley and Jefferson Counties, I have an opportunity to talk a lot to families and children about nutrition. So what does it mean to pack a healthy lunch? When I look for the answers to this question, I like to head on over to MyPlate.gov. MyPlate is the golden rule for how to have a healthy, well-balanced diet. Here I am at MyPlate.gov, and this is a picture of what should go on my plate. You can see here that the plate is divided into four sections. Two of those sections are slightly smaller than the other two sections. So we have fruits, vegetables, greens, and protein. Off to the side of my plate is where I should have a dairy serving. So when I think about my meal plans for the week, this is what I need to envision putting on my plate. Now to help myself when I do that, I actually have a small round plate. 
this is the size plate I would use if I were making my food at home. First, I wanna to talk to you about fruits. Now, we want to try to eat fresh, whole fruit whenever possible. When we can't access whole fruit because maybe it's not in season or there wasn't a good sale, and we wanna choose an applesauce or a canned fruit, it's best to choose an option that is unsweetened and processed only in 100% natural fruit juice or water. That's very important to make sure that canned fruits or processed fruits is still as healthy as can be. Now, when we look at our whole fruit, we want to think about what would be the average size, the size of about the palm of our hand. Some fruits are really big, while others might be really small. For instance, an apple. Sometimes you might find an apple that looks to be as big as your head, and other times it might just be a miniature apple that you eat and you think, I'm still a little bit hungry. So you wanna find something that's in the medium range. Vegetables, you also want to go with as many fresh vegetables as possible. When you do choose canned vegetables, it's important to make sure that it says no salt added. When you can't find a no salt added variety, then the next best choice is low sodium. A tip for making a canned vegetable even healthier is to dump the canned vegetables into a strainer and rinse with cold water. This will help get off any extra salt that was added during the processing. Another healthy option is frozen vegetables. Frozen vegetables come in every variety imaginable from okra, green beans, Brussels sprouts, corn, peas, any vegetable you can think of, you can probably find in the freezer aisle at the local grocery store. Now, the same as with the canned vegetables is you want to just get only the vegetable. You don't want added salt or other ingredients. The way that you can tell if it's just the vegetable is you flip over the bag of vegetables and there should just be one ingredient. When we're planning our dairy, what we're thinking about is really milk, yogurt, or cheese. When we're looking at our dairy products, we want to always choose low-fat skim or fat-free. Also, it's important to look for varieties that do not have added sugars. So if you're looking at milk, you wanna drink white milk. And if you're looking to eat some yogurt, you want to choose yogurt with no added sugar. A trick is that you can add your own fruit and avoid a lot of added sugars unnecessarily. When we're choosing our greens or our carbohydrates, it's important to choose whole greens whenever possible. Whole greens can come in the form of breads, crackers, oats, or it can also come in the form of things like cereal, quinoa, brown rice, buckwheat, and even whole grain pasta. These are all examples of whole grains that we can add to our plate when we're planning our lunches for the week. The first thing I do when I think about planning my lunches is I grab a notebook and a pen or a pencil. And I like to really make a plan by writing a list. I start out by deciding which proteins I'd like to pack in my lunch this week. For this week, I decided I'd like to have some hummus, which is made of chickpeas and counts as a protein, some peanut butter and also some cashews and some pistachios. I chose that because I like to have a snack type lunch each day. I do this because I have meat for dinner, and so I like to have a variety throughout the week and throughout my day. After I've chosen which proteins I'll have, I like to think about which grain, which whole grain I'd like to eat that week. There's a particular type of cracker that I really like, and it's a whole grain cracker, so this is what I'll be having this week. The reason I prefer crackers is just because I can mix it up um, with dips or my vegetables or just eat plain, whereas if I choose a bread, then I feel like I really need to have a sandwich. Sometimes I'll also cook myself some pasta 
and just have a little side dish of some whole grain pasta. For my dairy this week, I've chosen to go with some no fat vanilla Greek yogurt and some sharp white cheddar cheese. The reason I do everything on one day, which is Sunday, is because then I'm sure to have a healthy meal for lunch each day of the week. I like the reusable containers because it reduces waste, so I have smaller containers for the cheese than a little bit larger container for the yogurt. Food safety is very important, so I've washed my hands well, cleaned the surface, washed all of my produce really well, and I have clean utensils and cutting boards. Now that all my vegetables are prepared, I'll assemble my little vegetable trays for my lunchbox this week. For my proteins this week, I said I decided on nuts, a little bit of peanut butter, and some hummus. To help when you're making your servings for the week, you can even use the serving size as the scoop. So for instance, this is a two tablespoon serving size for hummus. So I'll just go ahead and use the two tablespoon spoon as I scoop it into the containers. Now it's time for my fruit and I'm going to make myself some little fruit cups. I'll have kiwi and cantaloupe this week. I'll actually make some extras because I like to have them in the refrigerator for snacks. So you'll see that I make more than what I need for just five lunches. To help reduce waste in the environment, you can find alternatives to plastic bags. As you have seen, I like to use plenty of reusable containers. And when I can't fit additional containers in my lunchbox, or maybe I'm out of them, I like these little paper bags for things that are not wet or liquidy. So what I'll be packing my whole grain crackers in are these little foldable paper bags. Now it's time to pack the lunch bag. I have my miniature vegetable trays, yogurt and cheese for dairy. My fruit options are cantaloupe and kiwi. Then I have multi-green crackers for my green. I also have this nice reusable thermos for water. I have other water bottles as well, but I really like this because it keeps my drink very, very cold. I also have here a reusable lunchbox that's insulated to keep all the food healthy and cold. It's especially important for the dairy. And some reusable ice packs. By purchasing these reusable products, I decrease the amount of things that I need to throw away, throwing away money, but also I reduce the amount of waste that goes into the landfills or even ends up in the water sources or on the side of the road. So what I have here is my handy lunchbox. Ready to go for tomorrow and the rest of the containers will be in the refrigerator for every other day this week. I can start off my work week knowing that I have healthy food to keep me energized and learning throughout the day. Thanks for tuning in with me, Angela, and come back again. Let's head back to the Annette S. Boggs Steam Building at WVU's Jackson's Mill, where we're going to meet up with some 4-H friends to talk about climate-related career paths. We'll talk about what kind of jobs are out there and how you can land them when you're ready. Hi, I'm Orion Post, and I'm here with WVU at Jackson's Mill to talk to you about career pathways that have to do with climate change. Now, when you think of this, you think of environmental scientists or meteorologists, but there are several pathways around topics of climate change. Let's try to explore these pathways. The supplies that you'll need are an electronic device which you'll use to look at websites such as the Bureau of Labor Statistics website, bls.gov. Research careers that interest you. Engineering, politics, agriculture, science in general, See how these careers can lead back to climate change. Next, learn about the job description. 
What is the day-to-day -day like? Does it sound like a job that would interest you? Use a browser to research the requirements and education that you'll need for this pathway. Then write down what you learn. Hi, my name is Stephanie and I researched education careers regarding climate change. I learned that educators who teach about this important issue can help students to change their behaviors regarding the climate. For example, if 16% of high school students were taught about climate change, we could see a 19 gigaton reduction of carbon dioxide by 2050. Also, better climate education can help to save lives, because if we improve the environment, natural disasters such as tsunamis and tornadoes are less likely to occur, therefore helping our environment to improve in the process. Thank you. When I was researching potential jobs for the future for climate change pathways, I came across Ecosystem Carbon Accountant, which is a person who measures the carbon footprint of an organization and provides strategies to reduce carbon emissions. Also, I came across a marine biologist who studies sea levels, ecosystems, and sea life. For all of these, you would need a bachelor's degree for an entry-level job, a master's degree for a higher up job, and a PhD if you wanted to start your own. All of these jobs focus on the study of animals and their natural habitat to understand their environments and care planning for animals. Today I was looking into career pathways and I found engineering, and the way engineering can relate to climate change is solar engineering. Solar engineering is a subcategory of engineering that allows us to make solar energy that can replace our dependency on fossil fuels, which are a non-renewable resource that we don't have a lot of and we need a more efficient way of getting our energy. Someone who is a solar engineer typically studies as a mechanical engineer at a four-year college. And the reason that solar engineering is good and we need more people to become solar engineers is that solar energy allows us to have a good renewable resource from the sun that is clean and allows us to keep living better. I raise produce to sell at my local farmer's market. Selling at local farmer's markets reduces fossil fuels used to move products from long distances. I also use sustainable farming practices to reduce the amount of water I use. I plant cover crops and rotate crops to improve so soil health. Responsible farming and farmers are an important part of our future and, and a great career. Throughout responsible farming practices, we can reduce our carbon footprint. Repeat this process as many times as you'd like with any jobs that interest you. Maybe you'll find the next big breakthrough or help prevent a disaster. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you find some interesting careers that you might want to look into later. See you next time. Bye. I've taken up a new hobby. I'm trying to teach mosquitoes to do math. I heard that it's the little things that count. Hi, my name is Carrie Cart. I work for WVU Extension Service in the Kanawha County Office for the Family and Community Development Unit. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make flavored popcorn. Now we all go to the grocery store and we see all those little expensive flavorings that they sell that you can flavor your popcorn with. Um, but there's some really reasonable and easy way to do it at home. And that's what I wanna show you today. So. First thing I'm gonna do is start with a regular old lunch bag. This is just a plain old lunch bag. Mine happens to be white. You could use a brown one. You're gonna open it up. I have some popcorn kernels here. You're gonna place two tablespoons of popcorn kernels in your bag. So, there's one. And there's two. Now, after you get the popcorn in, it's really important that you fold the bag up nice and tight. You want to be neat, because if you leave the bag open, the popcorn can come flying out. 
Now all you have to do is place this in the microwave just exactly like that for a minute and a half to two minutes. You'll know when it's done when you can no longer hear the popcorn popping. So let me pop this in the microwave and I'll show you how to add some great flavor to it. All right, so I went ahead and I pulled our popcorn out and I actually made a second one for us. So you can see about how much popcorn you get out of that. It fills the bag about half full, but if you fill it any more, you run it overflowing. So you're better off to make a couple bags worth if you want. Now there's two ways you can flavor it, either in the bag or we can put it inside a bowl. And there's all kinds of options to flavor with. And I'd like to show you what some of those options are. Um, you can use some dry ranch mix the same that you use like to make in your salad dressing, that works wonderful. Um, I've got some taco seasoning here mix. If you don't have any taco seasoning mix, you can easily just add straight chili powder. Um, if it's around the holidays, what a wonderful idea. How about pumpkin spice? If you like pumpkin, you'll love this one. Um, but the two I'm gonna make for you today is cinnamon and sugar and Parmesan cheese. Let me show you how easy it is. Now I like to put just a little bit of cooking spray on the popcorn because it helps the seasonings and the cheese to stick. So I shake it up a little bit. I'm gonna do the first one right in the bag here to show you how easy it is. I'm just gonna spray a little bit, close the bag up and shake it around. And let's this first one, let's make this with the Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna take my Parmesan cheese. It's just regular old grated Parmesan cheese in the canister. I'm gonna shake a little bit in there. You put on as little or as much as you like, but keep in mind, the more you add, the more calories you add. And again, I'm just gonna shake it up here. And if it's just for you, all you have to do is fold down the top. And you can pretend like you're in the movie theater and you have your own personal cheese flavored popcorn. That's Parmesan cheese flavored. How simple is that? Now, if you've got a bigger crowd and you wanna work with a whole bunch of people, you wanna make a big, a big batch, you can just keep, either use a bigger bag or make more of these and dump it into a bowl. I've got a nice clear bowl here and I'm gonna dump it in. That one had a few kernels in it, but that happens when you make popcorn. Again, I'm gonna take my cooking spray and I'm just gonna lightly mist it over. And then I'm gonna take my cinnamon and sugar and I'm just gonna sprinkle just a little bit of that on it. Make it nice and flavorful. And then I'm gonna toss this around. You could stir it with a spoon, but you can just toss it around. But look how wonderful that looks. And I'm gonna put just a dollop on the top just so it makes it extra special. A nice, sweet little treat that's really low fat, doesn't have any calories in it, and very tasty. Hope you all enjoy it. Make some popcorn. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Energy Express. We'll be right back here tomorrow. We hope you will too. We'll see you then.